Hi, everyone. With the Olympic Games starting, I um, wanted to ha have a go at one of these um, multi-class image classification problems um, on, on Kaggle. If you're interested in this particular problem, um, you can do, do a search on Kaggle for Olympic Games event data set, and you should um, find um, a folder with uh, 10 directories, so 10 sports, 100 images in each of those directories. Um, they're all um, snippings from YouTube. So um, I think the videos were uh, record were at 25 frames per second and the the uh, image sizes are all uniform at 1000 by 562 pixels. Um, they look a little bit like this if you, if you have a look at the screen. Um, being uniform, it, it does make it a bit easier for the prediction exercise. Um, so uh, I wanted to do this challenge, but I also wanted to um, test out um, a new uh, transfer learning model, um, uh, Efficient Net version two. This this paper was released, I think, in April, um, and um, and then uh, it was um, packaged as part of the, the PIMS um, PyTorch packages in I think early July or late June. So. Um, it's the first opportunity that I'm getting to, to, to play around with this transfer model. Um, I, it, it is part of the university work and, um, and, and also just playing around with, um, computer vision, um, both video and, uh, image classification exercises. I, I've been a big fan of the efficient net version one models. Um, they were, they were uh, very quick to train and they had a, a relatively good um, um, level of accuracy. So I, I was really keen to, to, to have a look at the vision net version two, compare it to some of the other common um, transfer learning models that, that I've used in the past and, um, to, and to see how it performs. Now, um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time. I'm actually repurposing some code that, that I've written uh, in the past. So, the, I guess the aim for me is to just to see how efficient net version two goes against some of the other transfer learning models without doing um, a lot of fine tuning um, um, and, and spending a lot of time or effort to, to do it. Um, might just show really quickly uh, for those that are not familiar with transfer um, learning or pre-trained using pre-trained models. The, uh, the basic idea is the, these pre-trained models um, they they learn um, based on a lot of data and a lot of images. Um, so ImageNet, for example, that they'll they'll be trained on that, and and then um, they can be cut out and repurposed to predict for uh, a new new problem. So so in this case, it will be we're using a pre-trained model to predict um, the yeah the 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 ten sports um, or images from the ten sports. Um, so um, that's that's I guess a pre-trained model. Um, a quick one in terms of how, how I'm doing it. I'm repurposing some old code that, that I've got. Um, one thing I'll point out: it's really important. I think when you're using these transfer learning models to to have access to a GPU hard, hardware accelerator, it's um, really difficult to to um, to do to do this just on your CPU, um, it'll take a long time to to train, um, and um, yeah, certainly recommend uh, running it or getting access to a GPU when you're doing this. These models that I'm trying, I'm going to go uh, try the efficient net, um, the the small version of the model. There's uh, so with the the fewest parameters. Uh, now that there are the medium, the large, and extra large versions of it. Uh, I won't have the computer computational power uh, and the time to, to run those. So um, yeah, I'm just going to run the, the small version of it. There's also a variation to um, to this now with the efficient net B0, uh, B1, um, B2, B3 uh, versions of, of efficient net version two. So I'll, I'll um, give a couple of those uh, a go as part of this. So I'm using um, the team packages. Um, and, uh, I'm spending a lot of time on running the code because it's, uh, it's probably not the purpose of this, but um, I'm just going to point out a few transfer learning models that, are, that I'm going to compare.
um, efficient net version too. So the VGG, I'll compare it to the VGG 16 and VGG 19. Um, I'll also compare it to ResNet, um, which is a common um, common common one that's uh, used a fair bit. Um, so I'll use efficient net uh, version one as well. I'll compare it to that. Um, and the other ones that I'm, um, I'll, I'll look at Resnext and um, Inception um, version three, the glue, and, um, which, which is uh, in the path for me. Inception um, uh, version three has been the uh, best predictive um, transfer learning model that I've used with the minimal effort. So. Um, it's it's certainly one that uh, I'd be curious to see how efficient that two um, uh, uh, compares to that. So one thing I want to point out because I've only got a thousand samples of each of the images, it, I thought it would be important to use some uh, data augmentation to beef up some of the samples that I've got. Um, the the old code that I'd written um, uh, used a random horizontal flips about fifty percent of the time, color jitter. Um, and 50% uh, of the time um, flip the image to grayscale. Now, as part of the, the quick sort of training exercises that, that I'll do, um, I'll actually toggle between uh, using random erasing. I probably won't use vertical flips because I think it'll actually um, uh, make, make the prediction worse. But uh, just to demonstrate, you know, I'll use this code block here to show... Um, yeah, sorry, this code block. Uh, I'll use this code block to show what it does to, to, to the images. Um, so you can see that athletics image here has been flipped um, and that'll be a new sample that, that, that I'll train on as well. Um, and if, if I run it a few times, um, you can see um, the code block is now showing uh, the same image. Um, it'll be fed in as a um, something that's grayscale with a bit of a raising. So this is a really good way to, to, to turn um, or to increase the samples that you, you train on. So um, to start off with, I'm going to get rid of a raising and get rid of vertical flips. And I'm actually going to get rid of color jitter, but I will um, certainly use um, a few of those uh, augmentation techniques um, to, to test if the, the models do a bit better or a bit worse with, with them on. The other thing that's, uh, I guess, um, important to, to point out, and I guess this goes back to this slide here, um, the, the, what we're trying to do is we're, we're using a pre-trained model and then we need to replace the final layer um, to be able to predict what we uh, want in our specific uh, classification problem. Um, so in this instance, um, and I'm just showing this for, for one of the, the, the efficient net um, family models here, the, the B0. So I'm printing what that model looks like. Um, and if I scroll down to the final layer, uh, I can see uh, the final linear layer there has the input features of uh, 1,280 and an output feature of 1,000. Now, if I go to my um, efficient net B0 model construct that I've written, I can see the, the, the model that I'm using. I, I want to replace the final layer. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the input as the same. And then the output will be, um, here I've got a number of classes and I'll just scroll and show you the number of classes will be 10 because that's that's the number of images. Uh, um, well, that's the, the number of sports that I wanna be able to classify. So if I scroll up to the top here, I've got um, 10 classes that I wanna predict. So um, that's basically uh, one of the e easiest ways to, um, to, to use transfer learning models where you're just re replacing the final layer. Now that there, there are other ways um, and, and you can certainly replace more than one layer, but um, for, for the purpose of this, uh, um, just doing the final linear layer replacement. So I'm gonna start with, um, with nine, nine or 10 epochs. I think I'll, I'll range between five to 10 epochs um, and a smaller batch size of eight to, to begin with. Um, I'll, I'll play around with that. Um, uh, so I'll toggle between those two. 
Um, what I might do is also play around with the um, the um, optimizer. So I'll, I'll use the Adams optimizer and, and I'll start off with this initial uh, learning rate, but um, depending on how, how the results are going, I might go to a lower rate like um, uh, 0.001 or, or uh, go the other way if, if, if the results look like uh, they need me to sort of tweak it that way. Um, there are a few other uh, optimizers that I might play, like Adam Delta. Um, um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the results. The, the loss will be cross entropy loss. Um, I, I feel like for multi-class classification that that does the best job. And uh, yeah, that's probably it in terms of um, starting to, to, to train. Um, so let's just, just uh, try the first of the efficient net um, models. Cool. And uh, that should start to train now. Um, I'm using weights and biases um, to uh, how each of those models are going. Um, so that should start training. Just to just give you a bit of an idea. Uh, so I've run these models now. And just looking at the results and, and purely here, I'm just gonna evaluate it on the validation accuracy. Um, uh, and the Inception version three uh, models have the best validation accuracy, um, but the efficient net uh, version two, the B zero um, version of that model uh, had uh, pretty good accuracy at 97.16, uh, relatively quick runtime. Um, and if I just open up what the curves look like, um, so you can see the validation, um, actually seeing the loss, um, Oh, sorry, the, the validation. And so it converges pretty quickly. Um, it's, it's relatively smooth. It doesn't jump up, up, up and around, up and down a, a lot. So um, I think it's a it performed relatively well. Um, didn't uh, didn't sort of uh, get the highest validation accuracy, but uh, in terms of speed and um, and getting something with a, a relatively uh, low effort, is it's, it's a pretty good transfer learning model. Um, and you can see the the light green. Um, uh, icons there, they're, they're the efficient net version two. Um, they, uh, yeah, there's there's various ones. Some some I use jitter augmentation. Some I uh, think in this one I turn grayscale off. Um, and some some of them I left the the default augmentation that I had originally. Um, they all performed relatively well. Um, a lot of these models, I think, they're all ninety percent or. Um, other than the, the one right at the bottom, the, the 90% and above prediction. Um, and, and certainly the inception ones up the top there, they are, um, you know, 98.5, uh, um, nearly 98.6% accuracy um, on the validation. And so obviously the, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can do to fine tune um, the parameters and, you know, potentially freeze the weights at different layers um, to, to try and um, get the prediction higher, but for, relatively minimal effort uh, and, and repurposing old code that I, that I had, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the accuracy that, that these um, transfer learning models have got. So just to compare it to one where I'm not using transfer learning model, um, a lot more effort uh, on, on this convolutional neural network that I wrote. Um, so training time was a lot longer and the accuracy was um, only 92%. So, um, yeah, for, 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 for what they can bring with, with minimal effort, um, yeah, the transfer learning models are, are pretty amazing and certainly something that I'm excited by and, and I can see some really um, great uses. So I hope you uh, enjoy the rest of the Olympics and um, yeah, have a, have a go at Efficient Net version too. I, for your uh, image classification problems, I, I think it's a, a pretty cool transfer learning model. Uh, like I said, minimal effort. Um, some good results as well.